This video demonstrates the processes by which I hope to utilize unused thermocouple inputs on MGL RDAX in my small turbine powered helicopter to monitor uh, the status of a number of variables on the helicopter. To accomplish this, I designed and had fabricated a small circuit board that I call the RDAC TC input interface and uh, another small circuit board that is used with the EFIS extender to simplify prov uh, connecting uh, analog digital inputs to the EFIS extender. I'll show you those components now and explain what is going on. First of all the thermocouple interface board is this one right here and it involves a dozen voltage divider circuits as well as a couple of other circuits that are connected to the aux uh, inputs on the RDAC. Currently this little board is being uh, the current being consumed by it is being monitored by this multimeter and you can see that it's a very steady uh, 23 milliamps of draw uh, for this board and it is and that is powering uh, 10 of the 12 voltage divider circuits. The other two are powered by 12 volt signals, which I will explain in a moment. The rest, uh, 10 of the thermocouple uh, voltage divider circuits, are powered from the 5 volt output of the RDAC itself. Now I'll explain and demonstrate how it all works. First of all, these two small wires here represent 12 volt signals, warning signals, that would come from the Astronics vertical power primary power system that I'm planning on installing in my ship. Uh, if a 12 volt uh, signal is applied to it, which I can do right now, you will see that I get a battery current warning when that circuit is energized and on this one I get a generator uh, current warning. In both cases it indicates an overcurrent situation on either the generator or the battery. Now currently I have just three of the thermocouple, so I have correction five of the thermocouple uh, inputs uh, hooked up to that board. Uh, simulating f five uh, discrete inputs. When I take this wire nut loose and, and the current, correction, the normal status of those thermocouple inputs is pulled low or grounded. Then there's no alarm. What, when I take this wire nut loose, three of the circuits will become ungrounded and you'll see that there are three different warnings that show up. One is an ECU caution, one is an EC warning, and the other is a clutch in transit uh, indication. These could be programmed to do absolutely anything somebody might want. I'll, I'll reground that right now so as to get rid of that distraction. Okay, with that, the three warnings should go away, and they have. Uh, Alright, another uh, function that I have here is these two represent uh, circuits that would go to chip detectors that would uh, pull the circuits low. These, these are ultimately are connected through the, to the uh, aux inputs. So if I, if I ground these one at a time, you'll see that I get aux 1 uh, indication. And if I ground the other one, I do have a problem with this. It's the only problem I've detected so far is for some reason, in addition to getting the aux 2 indication, I also get TC temp uh, uh, 5 through 12. Uh, so that's an issue to be resolved. It may be a setting problem, I'm not sure. Uh, when, the, uh, when the ground is eliminated, the alarm does go away. The other thing that I've done is using this 
EFAS extender interface. Uh, uh, my intention is to use this to control through switches on the cyclic grip a variety of functions, uh, including a number in the EFAS. The only one that I've got hooked up currently is the pagination page. So if I touch this, I should get uh, changes. This is grounding it out just as if the, it were a switch. I'll get a change in the pages. It will step through the pages. So that's the basic system and how it functions so far.